Hello everyone and welcome to another most exciting game, also from round 7 of the 2020 Tata Steel Masters edition. It's uh, former World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana versus Daniil Dubov. And it's very interesting, they will be they played the same line uh, Anand played against Carlsen, uh, but uh, uh, if you remember I said at some point Carlsen took a 20 minute thing deciding where to go with the knight, well Dubov chose a different approach. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, and I also showed you the wrong standings after round seven uh, in the previous video. They weren't wrong, it was just uh, before they published uh, Fabi's uh, and uh, Dubov's results. So uh, we also have to take that into consideration. But okay, uh, Fabi opens with e4. And like I said, uh, they go into the same Sicilian as uh, Anand versus Carlsen, knight f3, knight c6. We have the Rosolimo, bishop to b5. Sorry about that. Uh, we have g6. Uh, same as Carlson played, we have castles, uh, bishop g7, c3, preparing d4, knight f6, uh, defending the pawn, rook to e1, castles, and now d4. Dubov replies the same as Carlson, we have d5, and now e5, uh, attacking the knight here. And here, if you remember, Carlson took that uh, 20 minute thing, deciding where, whether to go knight d8 or knight to e4. Magnus went uh, knight to e8, but here Dubov goes knight to e4. And it's also very interesting because uh, Fabi, of course, was expecting. Uh, 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 this Sicilian to, to show up in the World Chess Championship. So here, uh, Fabi is definitely digging into his World Chess champ Championship preparation. So, bishop to e3, continuing development with queen to b6 now, putting pressure on the bishop, but also on the b2 pawn if the bishop moves. So first bishop captures, b captures, and the queen c1. Uh, defending the pawn here, and now rook to b8 as the b-file opened up, now threatening to pick up the pawn. b3, defending, and now queen to a5. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, the threat is uh, rook captures on b3, but this has all been played before, so it's nothing new. Uh, d captures on c5 by Fabi, allowing this rook captures on b3, a captures, and now queen captures on a1. And now there is one game uh, in the World Rapid Championship uh, in 2019. Uh, Gukesh D played it against Ruslan uh, Shcherbakov, where knight to d4 was played, and Gukesh was able to win this game. But here Fabi goes for b4, uh, defending the c5 pawn, also taking away the a5 square from the white queen. And now knight to d4 will be very interesting, as you will have some problems defending the c six pawn so uh, it is as of move 15 that we have a completely new game so here queen back to a4 uh, getting the queen back into the game also defending the c6 pawn right away knight to d4 and this is all uh, calculated uh, as uh, yes you do give up the e5 pawn but it's a it's a most interesting pawn sacrifice it's been uh, a long time since i've seen such a such a uh, exquisite uh, positional pawn sacrifice. So bishop captures on e5 is played and now f3, kicking back the knight and you don't have uh, any good square for the knight. You have to go to f6 and now your bishop is kind of locked uh, uh, here on e5 and this is uh, an elaborate plan to get rid of black's bishop pair. So queen to a3, uh, forcing a queen trade with queen captures, knight captures, and now uh, rook to e8 by black, and here comes the bishop to g5. So now you have some problems. You cannot allow f4. f4, you will not be able to move the bishop. If you move the bishop, bishop captures on f6, and your rook on e8 will hang. So here, there really uh, is no good move. You, you can't move the bishop uh, as it's under attack, and you can't, uh, well, even if you could defend it, uh, you, you cannot really allow f4. So here, bishop captures on d4. This is how Fabi gets rid of the bishop pair. C captures on d4, fixes his pawn structure, and just king g7 now. This is necessary, so if the bishop captures, you can capture with the king. Uh, and now b5, a nice... Uh, a nice bre breakthrough on the queen side. We have bishop to d7, and now Fabi has to decide uh, between captures and b6. b6 also seems very interesting, for example, captures, captures, and rook b8. Uh, rook b1, defending the pass pawn, and it's already a very strong pass pawn, however, it's uh, hard, to, hard to see how you would uh, promote it all the way. You could, uh, well, let's say, bishop f4, uh, you could try to kick away the rook, rook b7, and it's, uh, of course, playable. But uh, Fabi decides to go for B captures on C6, uh, which is very interesting. I, I, t to me, pushing the pawn seems uh, more straightforward, uh, more natural. But okay, uh, Fabi decides to do it this way. Uh, point is, after B bishop captures on C6, now... Uh, uh, Fabi has a firm grasp uh, on the e5 square, firm grip, and uh, you, he doesn't want the black to ever play e5 to ruin this setup, and he's now going to go after the a7 pawn, so this is how Fabi uh, decides to do it. Uh, bishop back to d2, 
uh, and we have a6 now trying to create a barrier with bishop to b5 we have knight to c2 uh, bishop to b5 and now rook to a1 uh, preparing knight to b4 to go after the a6 pawn we have knight to d7 uh, hoping to execute e5 uh, but knight to b4 and here e5 uh, could be could be very dangerous if played uh, for example e5 you, you can go c6 knight b6 and now d captures on e5 and you cannot recapture because of bishop to c3 pinning the rook as the king is still on g7 so you would first have to go d4 then comes c7 and you don't have time to to pick up the e5 pawn you have to block it rook to c8 and now knight captures on a6 so it's uh although the the, the engine uh gives this as playable for black uh, i don't know it's hard to say if anyone would would go for this with black uh, but okay, uh, e6 by Dubov, uh, he can always push e5, so let's just strengthen that d5 pawn as it was also under attack with the knight. And now comes bishop to f4. Uh, if you capture here, then rook to a8, so you don't want to capture it too soon. So first bishop to f4, uh, again grabbing a hold of the e5 square and also uh, uh, preventing the rook from reaching b8. So rook to a8, adding a defender here, uh, and now rook to a5. Uh, not allowing the pawn to be pushed we have knight to b8 uh, and now comes g4 uh, first you, you want to play g5 take care of both of these pawns and then you want to start bringing your king into the game so king f8 both dubov and uh, fabi start bringing their kings into the game king e8 we have g5 now uh, knight to d7 uh, and now comes bishop to c7 uh, just uh, not allowing the king to go uh, anywhere closer. Uh, we have f6 and now h4. Yeah, if you capture, I'm still going to cover all of these uh, squares, so it's not a problem. Rook to a7 attacking the bishop and now bishop to d6. The bishop is very strong here. Uh, we have rook back to a8 and now comes king e3. Uh, we have king to f7 and now f4 uh, by Fabi. King g7, now comes king d2. We have h5 uh, and just king to c3. So Dubov has to wait and see what, what uh, Fabi will do. And still, it's very interesting. Dubov still has six pawns, Fabi only five. five. Uh, but it is, uh, it was, uh, that's why I, I thought it was a, a very, very exquisite pawn sacrifice because uh, black is, uh, as of that moment, black is just helpless to, to see what white will do. Uh, king back to f7, uh, we have knight to d3, uh, and now bishop back to c6. Uh, we have king to b4, and now rook to a7. You cannot uh, go rook b8 check, so rook a7, and now rook to a3. And here Fabi's plan is to bring the knight to c1 to b3 maybe to a5 uh, and and see what happens uh, and here i thought why not rook b7 check and uh, indeed rook to b7 check seems like the way to go because if you go up the board with king here then you can just give up the pawn and you will never uh, you know get your king away from all the checks so it would be uh, even very dangerous for white to do this so uh, after rook to b7 check it's most likely that you you will have to go back and then just rook back to a7 so uh, saying that this plan is no good Probably knight b4 is coming next, then bishop b5, and uh, still, how are you? How are you breaking through here? Uh, but Dubov says, okay, I'm not uh, interested in this. Obviously, it's not a good plan, so he just uh, keeps waiting. King g7, knight to c1. Dubov repeats, king to f7, and now knight to b3. Uh, we have bishop to b5, and now knight to a5. So Dubov allowed Fabi to continue with his plan. Rook to a8, and now Fabi finally makes a go for it. C6. Uh, pushing back the knight, knight b6, and now c7. Uh, and now it's, of course, very dangerous. You already have a pass pawn on c7. It's a defended pass pawn, so uh, should be should be good if you can push it all the way, of course. Uh, we have f5 by Dubov, closing the position here, and now uh, rook to e3. Uh, somehow, if, if the knight can reach, let's say, knight b7 to, to c5, go after the e6 pawn, might be difficult for, for Dubov to defend it. So first, rook to c8. Now the knight can move. Uh, we have knight to b7, continuing with this plan. Knight to c4 now. Uh, and here uh, comes rook back to e1. Here you could go for the plan uh, like knight to d8 check. King moves and now rook captures on e6 check. King d7 uh, and rook captures on g6. Yes, you grab a lot of pawns and this seems to be uh, excellent for white. But then you require a lot of calculation. For example, knight captures on b6. But then you have to see a rook g7 check, king to e8 and now g6. So it's a really elaborate uh, piece sacrifice and it's not uh, easy to 
to go for something like this. If bishop d7, you just eliminate it, captures, captures g7, and there's no stopping the pawn. Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, hard to figure all this out in in you know in all of this mess. So Fabi just moves the rook, rook e1, uh, and now comes bishop to d7. Here you you cannot just go knight captures because the knight captures with check and you lose the rook. So after rook e1, we have bishop to d7. Uh, guarding the e6 pawn one more time, but now king c5, Fabi uh, gains more activity with the king, king e8, and now comes bishop to e5, so freeing up the d6 square, uh, for the moment you don't have access to it as the knight nicely covers it from c4, but uh, there's there are still moves to be made, king f8 and now rook back to a1, so going after the a6 pawn, and now Again, there's the problem. You cannot just remove the defender of the c7 pawn uh, because of king d6 now attacking the knight and the bishop. And after anything, knight checks, you will capture here and it's just over. Knight b6 check, you're gonna go king to d6. Uh, and after another check, now king to c6. And next, knight to d6 is coming and it's just a winning game for white. Uh, so, bishop back to b5 guarding the pawn but now bishop d6 check again you cannot capture the bishop uh, as knight uh, captures just wins king e8 and now knight to a5 finally fabi is able to get rid of this knight from c4 knight back to d2 and now bishop to e5 making room for the king uh, as long as the knight is on c4 the king can never reach the b6 square so king to d7 but now finally king to b6 making making some real progress here and now knight to c c4 check by dubov uh, otherwise you you can just uh, wait and there is nothing for you to do uh, we have uh, knight captures and here d captures on c4 dubov gets a passed pawn of his own king to c5 uh, and now comes uh, rook to e8 uh, we have rook to d1 uh, preparing to push the pawn uh, but now bishop to a4 attacking the rook rook ba ba back to a1 bishop to b5 back and now rook to a2 uh, we have king back to c8 now the king will be uh, preventing the pawn to be pushed and now king d6 uh, and here uh, Dubov is just uh, running out of squares to use. King b7, we have bishop to f6. Uh, we have king back to c8, bishop back to d8. King back to b7, Dubov can only wait uh, and repeat moves. Uh, king to e5. And now uh, the passed pawn is nicely protected here. And uh, the threat is king f6 followed by captures, captures, captures. And it's just game over. So rook f8 preventing king f6. But now rook a3. Uh, first uh, giving black the move, so black uh, worsens the position of his king even further. It's a very instructive idea, rook, rook a3. Uh, so king back to c8, uh, even uh, a, uh, you know, even worse position for the king, and only now king captures on e6. Or if rook defends, then you just go after these guys here. So rook e8 check, king f7, and now Duba finally gains activity with the rook, but now uh, it, it's, a, it's a capture fest. So king captures on g6, rook captures on f4, uh, and now comes king captures on h5 uh, freeing up uh, room for the g5 pass pawn to be pushed rook captures on d4 and now g6 uh, we have rook to d6 hoping for uh, hoping for g7 and bishop to e8 check but even that doesn't help black uh, so king to g5 first uh, and now rook to d3 uh, just hoping for for this trade but now feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for fabi while i give you a couple of seconds now, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. There is more than one winning move for Fabi, but there is the quickest way, which is the one Fabi chose, and that is g7. So here, uh, there's nothing to be done. Uh, if you capture the pawn, uh, if you capture the rook, then it's uh, not pushing in right away, because then you run into rook g3 check, and the pawn is picked up. But king h6, in fact, and now after rook g3, you just block the rook with bishop to, uh, bishop to g5, and the queening is next. So uh, we have c3, freeing up uh, the c4 square for the bishop, so you can guard this. Uh, and of course you still cannot uh, queen because of rook g3 picks up the queen, so uh, just king captures on f5. Rook g3, bishop to g5, uh, very very natural, bishop to c4 guarding the queening square, but now rook captures on a6. Uh, we have c2 by Dubov, but it's not a problem, rook to c6, and now bishop guards the c1 square, also the rook will be guarding it. Uh, we have bishop to b3, and here uh, Fabi just played h5, and it was in this position that Daniel Dubov resigned the game, and uh, Fabi joins, uh, well, not the leaders, but sort of the leaders who are trying to catch up to Ali Reza Firuja. So... Uh, here, there's nothing to do, h6, h7, queen is coming, and there's nothing you can do to prevent this. 
Uh, so yeah, and here are the, the actual standings. Uh, there you can see Fabi is also uh, on four and a half points with Wesley So and Jordan Van Forest. So that's what we uh, forgot to mention yesterday, even though I took it from the uh, from the uh, original website, but they still haven't updated it. And Alireza, of course, still uh, leading with five uh, out of seven. So I I very impressive stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Very, very impressive play by Fabi. Like I said, surely he dug up uh, into that World Chess Championship preparation as this was just uh, a masterclass. Um, really, really impressive stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank Robert Fisher for her contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this wonderful tournament, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and of course uh, the, the Women's World Chess Championship. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.